did did you do the majority of your training uh with Hickson or did you did you train with with uh because you got your black belt from Hickson right Hickson and Cron Hickson and Cron yeah so I you know I um I I had never trained uh anywhere but but with uh Hickson and Cron and then um as I got to be like I, I trained a little bit um as a youth with with Heron and Henner because I went to to high school with them so yeah. we trained a little bit but. I was mainly like I got committed and and trained with uh, Hickson and Crone, and you know I was Crone's training partner for for like ten years. That's awesome, man. Tell me a little bit of what it's like. Just I mean, because Hickson's another one of those characters that you know he doesn't come out in the public eye very much, but he's universally agreed upon as one of you know the greatest jujitsu competitors, minds. You know, like a god of jujitsu. And it's fun because, you know, us as jiu-jitsu practitioners that don't really recognize him can create whatever images we want to of him. Tell us a little bit of what it's like to be around him. Well, Hickson, like, he, he has a, a special a special energy, you know. And, and the only thing I could say, I've never been around a real samurai Right, you know, but it like he's he's what I imagine that a, a real samurai warrior would be, you know, and, and if you look at his his mannerisms when he when he's around his students, when he's around his family, and just overall how he treats people, like this is just a good natured human being, you know, and and you know when it when it came to to jujitsu and, and training with them, it was like. It always felt like I was training against or training with 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 the machine, you know. So it almost felt like his uh, his level of, of tightness and his level of, of of pressure. It just felt like like you're you're dealing with the machine, you know. And um, yeah, man, just just even being around Hickson is is it's been a great great inspiration for me. You know, I didn't have a father growing up, and Hickson was was like a father figure to me. You know, and, and uh, yeah, man, it's 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 just uh, I think it's a it's it's a, it's a blessing for 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 the whole community to even have an example like that to kind of let things uh, evolve evolve from. He's like so, a, he's our Bruce Lee. Yeah, he, he really is, and like you know, I've I've talked to two two people come to mind, and we've had plenty of people that come on and talk about the other guy, Ricardo Laborio, or Ricardo Laborio, and then obviously Hicks and Gracie. Those are the two guys that come to mind when I think about like just if you think about the gods of jujitsu, those are the two dudes that are like, and it, it's fun again because they came up at a time before YouTube in a time before we had instant access to watch other matches. So yeah. everything about them. Yeah. The, is the core. legend just, the, the legend just built from word of mouth, exactly, you know, it's just exactly. like, and, and by the time it got to the hundredth person, these guys go from being mere men to just being giants, you right. know, and we're all, we're all, we're following their, their path. That they and lead. it's refreshing to be able to speak to someone like yourself that has firsthand knowledge of their greatness to in turn be able to reinforce what we believe to be true, so it's it's pretty. It's I'll pretty tell cool. you. Uh, I'll tell you a story about Hickson. Oh, you know? please do, please do. Like, <laughs> he he. This, and this is some like some some mythical mythical shit right here. You know, he <laughs> uh, he trained he trained the 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 wild blue jays in his backyard. You know, he had a house in in uh, the Palisades. You know, so he had kind of like trees on his on his property. And he trained the Blue Jays. I don't know how he trained them, but he trained them to come to his finger at his call. So he would make a sound and just go. <laughs> and it didn't matter where where you were on the property, the Blue Jays would come to his hand. And I'm like, how did he how did he do that? You know what I'm saying? Like right. you can't, you can't, you know. It's it's yeah it's it's that it's that next level like, understanding yeah the <laughs> next level understanding of nature that only comes from someone that has the complete mastery of something. I talked about it a lot. You know, I'm a black belt, and you know, I consider myself to be somewhat a master of jujitsu. I don't call myself master, but to get the general idea, when I've mastered, not mastery, but I've got a mastery understanding of the art of jujitsu because I've been doing it for 13 years, and I put my entire life into understanding one thing. And what I've noticed is once you become 
once you have a level of understanding of one thing in that regard, it makes you understand how other things function in a similar manner. So thereupon, I could pick apart other philosophical principles and figure out how the cogs and the wheels turn. And putting that into terms of Hicks and Gracie, like he has such an amazing, like otherworldly understanding of jujitsu. Thereupon, now he can take that insightfulness and turn it into training wild blue jays to come rest on his fingers. It's just amazing. Man, un- unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen the show Narcos, but there's this scene where Pablo Escobar is complaining because he spent like a million dollars on these birds that were supposed to like be trained and he couldn't get him to do anything. And meanwhile, Hickson just got on his own and just like training all these birds. Like, hey, go, go over there. <laughs> you go over there. There's an amazing like righteousness yeah. to that, man. Like an understanding of nature. It's, 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 it's just like you said, a modern samurai. It's, it's hard not to, uh, to think of it in those terms. Let's talk a little bit about um, Hickson's jiu-jitsu philosophy. And I'd, I'd like to get your your impressions on that because this is a heavily debatable, uh, debated topic recently when we talk about sports jiu-jitsu and how it has kind of morphed away from the, um, the, uh, the principles of what BJJ as a uh, martial yeah. art was designed to be. What do you – Now – What do you think about mm-hmm. that? Now, you know, basically it's like uh, the whole the whole foundation of, of what jujitsu was was built upon was self-defense. You know, the, the the application of being able to defend yourself in in a real fight situation. You know, so that's that's what, what jujitsu was basically kind of like that's what that's what in the beginning they, they made it about. It was about self-defense and being able to defend yourself. And now, you know, the the sport, it, it's uh, it it's it's different, you know, because it, it's not so like some some academies are 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 pure competition schools, you know. So they're teaching you, they're teaching strategy, they're teaching the 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 newest positions, and then they kind of get a little bit further away from being able to actually defend yourself in in a real altercation. And you know, I think I think personally at this point, I think there's a place for 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 all of it, you know. But for me, to to when I look at being a black belt, if you're a black belt, but you're not even you don't feel comfortable or confident enough to defend yourself in a real fight, like what it was the purpose of you training all those years, you know? Like one thing I feel feel great about in life is that I don't have to fear anyone. You know, it doesn't matter who they are, how big they are. I don't have to fear anyone because I feel confident and comfortable that I can handle the situation and defend myself. I might not be able to beat everyone, but I damn sure can defend myself and I feel confident in that. And so to me, it's it's just kind of one of those things where it's like when you're when you're a jujitsu practitioner, you should strive to be good in, in all areas of the sport. You know, we see a lot of we see a lot of guys who are who are who are very good at one aspect or or different aspects of the game but then they're not complete like some guys you'll see okay he's a black belt when he's on your back but when when you mount him he's a blue belt or this guy has really good sweeps and really good lapel lapel grips and controls and then you put him in in no gi and he's not as good so a lot of a lot of everything that that the 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 hicks in jujitsu was based upon was less of can depending on the gi, more of self defense and and controls of the body, that that you should be able to be just as effective as you are with gi that you are without a gi, just as effective in an MMA fight as you are in in any aspect of of the game, and so you know that's that's why I feel like sometimes the the sport aspect can kind of make it make it uh guys are are, are specialists. You know, they have they have they have strategies. They specialize in certain things versus just being like all the way around complete. 